morning, everybody. We're live from the birdhouse, and today we're uh, talking a little bit about the New York State Breeding Bird Atlas, which is going on right now, and we're sharing your photos. You guys have sent in a lot of really cool photos from around town of different birds in your backyards and while you're out birding, so we'll share those as well. As always, We'd love to know what kind of things you're seeing. You can put in the comments, just say hi, just let us know what kind of things you've been seeing or hearing. Lots of birds are singing out there. I've been hearing the Cardinal singing like crazy. Um, Carolina wrens have been really chatty. Yesterday, I heard my first red winged blackbirds, which was pretty cool. And um, saw my first robin over the weekend. On Sunday, we had a very nice warm day, although it was pretty windy out here. Um, but I saw my first robin in the backyard, which was pretty exciting. And we've gotten reports of bluebirds starting to check out nest boxes. So a little bit of everything going on right now. Um, heard a report of a killdeer. Someone heard a killdeer. So some really cool stuff. The um, birds will start to come in. Some of these early season migrants will start to see. So absolutely put what you've seen in the comments. We would love to know um, what kind of things you have seen going on. Um, first of all, we've got a couple things going on here at the birdhouse, of course. Um, first being our caption contest. So this is our third caption contest we've done. We've gotten lots of great photos sent in from our photo contest from last summer. And we thought, absolutely, let's do something with those. So we started a caption contest. So every other week, we're posting a new photo and you can come up with your best caption for this photo. And after that week, the photo with the most likes or reactions, a $25 gift certificate to the birdhouse. So there's absolutely no cost or anything to, um, to enter. You can just go to our Facebook page. This picture will be pinned right up at the top and you can put in your best uh, caption for it. And so here's a larger picture of it here. We started a pet category in our photo contest a couple of years ago, and that's been quite fun to see the different photos that have come in for that. So um, this is our photo for the caption for this week. And then also we have live Birds of Prey coming in again this week on Saturday. So last week we had Teddy, the snowy owl. He was in here from 11 to 1. This Saturday from 11 to 1 again, we have Birds of Prey coming from Braddock Bay Raptor Research. You might be familiar with Braddock Bay Raptor Research because they have the Hawk Watch, which actually just started. So that started in March. And so there is a Hawk Watcher out there at the Raptor platform that you can go to every day. But we will have a couple of birds here from Braddock Bay Raptor Research this Saturday from 11 to 1 here at the birdhouse so you can come in and see them. So those are our events we have going on. We're planning a full calendar of events for the year and we'll have those posted soon. We're lining everything up on our calendar here to get ready for the spring and summer seasons ahead. So right now, um, New York is having what's called a breeding Bird Alice, and this is the third one that the state has ever done, and it runs for five years. And the whole idea of a breeding bird atlas is to try to get a feel and a picture for what birds are breeding and where, if their populations are growing or shrinking, and um, what types of habitats are important for specific types of species. And the breeding bird atlas um, has different sections. It goes through the whole state, and there's people who are uh, who have certain blocks of the state that they're responsible for going through and, and really accurately birding everything that they can and trying to get a really good picture for their little block that they have signed up for for the state. But everybody can participate and everybody should participate, especially if you use the eBird app. And I'll show you how you can use your eBird app to report your sightings to the Breeding Bird Atlas. So if you're familiar with eBird now, it's a free app you can get on your phone or you can use it on your computer if you pull up eBird.org. If you have a sign in, a login through the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, it's going to be that same username and password. You can log in there and report your sightings and you can do that all the time. So any kind of bird you ever see, 
you can log in or use your app to report those. So if you see a cardinal in your backyard, if you see a blue jay, you can make a little list, submit it, and it goes into eBird in this huge database that they use to determine bird populations and what birds are where and when. But the Breeding Bird Atlas takes that a step further. So not only is it what birds do you see and when, but it's their behaviors as well. So these can still be submitted through eBird, through your app. I'll show you how. But what happens is when you submit something via the what's called the portal on eBird, the new the Breeding Bird Atlas portal on eBird, it gives you another layer of things that you can add. So if you see, say, a cardinal, and that cardinal has been singing for seven plus days, that is something you can also log. So these are what are called the breeding codes. And when you're putting in your bird sightings, you can also put in breeding codes if you happen to see any of these what are called breeding bird behaviors. So these are signs that there's probably a bird breeding or attempting to breed or will breed in the area. So one of them is inappropriate habitat. If you see red-winged blackbirds in a marsh, that's appropriate habitat. That would be a breeding code, so you can submit that. If you see a bird singing, you can submit that. They're calling, they're probably trying to attract a mate, that's a breeding behavior. If you see a bird singing for seven plus days in the same spot, that's an even stronger indication. And so as you go down this list of codes, it's a stronger and stronger indication that the birds are breeding or are attempting to breed or have bred. Um, so singing for seven plus days, that's one of the codes. A pair in suitable habitat. If you see a pair of birds, so I've been getting, for example, a pair of cardinals I've been seeing for the past week or so, I could put that in as a breeding code of a pair and a suitable suit also, I've had an individual singing for seven plus days. So as far as what code to put in, if you have a bird doing multiple things, I always put in the one that is the strongest for, uh, for, for a strongest sign of breeding. So a singing bird is a strong sign that the birds are trying to breed, but a pair, meaning that you already have a pair in your habitat, that's going to be a stronger indication of breeding. So as you go down the list, it gets stronger and stronger indications of breeding behavior. Um, territorial defense, if you see some birds going after each other, that can happen anyways at feeders uh, all the time. They get a little uh, uh, territorial around their food source. So not necessarily around your feeder. If you see, you know, a grackle going after a sparrow, that's not really a territorial defense. It would be more if you see out in the trees, these birds doing kind of a territoriality behavior, you would report that. Courtship display, sometimes you can see woodpeckers or nuthatches on the side of the trees. They're flapping their wings and they almost look like they're dancing. That would be a, a courtship display. Um, in about a month or so, when we start to get the American woodcock here, that they do that really elaborate um, spiraling kind of uh, aerial display. That's absolutely a courtship display. Carrying nesting material. That's when we get photos sent in to us all the time out. So if you see a bird with a beak full of debris, that is their nesting material. That's a really strong sign of breeding behavior. They're building a nest somewhere. And then occupied nest is another one. And there's some more um, as as you go on and go in the season, you'll start to see recently fledged young. That's another breeding behavior, um, breeding uh, that you can put in a breeding code for. Um, but these are the ones that we would see earlier on in the season. So if you see a bird sitting on a nest, that's an occupied nest. That's absolutely breeding behavior. So you can absolutely submit all of this data yourself. And this goes into the breeding bird atlas. So it's all really important data that helps determine what birds are breeding where and also gives the size of their population. So the Breeding Bird Atlas goes on for five years. This is we're entering the third year of the atlas. And how do you submit data, you might ask. So if you have the uh, eBird app on your phone, what you do is from the home screen, you want to click on the little settings information. So the little settings wheel here, and then that will bring up your account name. This is just an example here. Um, so that'll bring up your account name, the portal, and then species summary, all that kind of stuff, language. But the portal is what you want to change. So it's 
default all the time to just regular eBird, which is fine. But if you wanna submit these breeding bird behaviors, um, the breeding behaviors, click on portal and you wanna scroll down and click on New York Bird Alice. And when you do that, that'll change your portal from eBird to the New York Bird Atlas. And all of your sightings will not only be logged in your eBird account, so you can still absolutely keep track of all your sightings, um, but it also will submit it to the New York Breeding Bird Atlas portal. So it gives just that, that much more data for this project. So that is going on now, and um, that will continue for a couple more years. And after the atlas is put out, um, they compile what birds are breeding where and which counties. And so there's a lot of data that goes into that and you can be a part of it. So another citizen science project, you can um, add to it as much or as little as you'd like. Every sighting makes a difference. So that is the breeding bird atlas, which is happening right now here in New York. And as far as breeding bird behaviors, go. This photo was sent in a couple weeks ago, but we've been getting reports of bluebirds starting to check out nesting sites. And bluebirds are one of the earliest nesting songbirds we have in the area. So they will sometimes start nesting this month, depending on the weather. Uh, but they'll, they will start usually in March, usually the end of March or early April is when we start hearing about bluebirds starting to nest. And we've been getting reports of them checking out nesting sites. So absolutely make sure those nesting cavities that you have are all cleaned out and ready to go for this year's birds. But I'm curious if you guys have seen any kind of behavior like this, if you've seen bluebirds or house sparrows or anything kind of checking out um, places to nest because that is starting to happen, which is really exciting. And um, with every day, the, the days get a little bit longer it's lighter out and hopefully the temperatures will start to warm up a little bit more too and these birds will continue on that nesting and breeding process so it's getting to be that time of the year also it's time to start thinking about backyard early signs of spring mason bees so we're still about a month out for mason bees usually they start popping out mid-april but these are the small pollinating insects. They really don't sting. They're going to be smaller than honeybees and they will go into mason bee houses. So they'll start to emerge early April usually. We'll let you know exactly when. Um, it's once the temperature hits 50 and is reliably 50 for a little bit, that's when they're going to start to come out. They'll emerge from their houses and then they'll they'll uh, mate and then they'll start filling mason bee houses, which are these uh, little Little tubular cavities, you might have seen these. These are popular houses. We have them here at the store. You can find them in garden centers sometimes. And they'll lay their eggs in here. And, um, and, and then once the, the, uh, the little chamber is full, they'll cap it off with mud. And inside that egg will develop, the larvae will develop, they'll pupate. They'll stay in there all winter and then emerge back again in the spring. Uh, people get mason bees because they're great pollinators. They want to attract them to their garden. They're really great early season pollinators. They do a lot of pollinating for fruit trees, for small plants. So we'll talk more about mason bees as we get closer to their emergence, but something to think about if you are interested in attracting them to put a house out pretty early once it starts to warm up a little bit more. And here's a picture of a, some mason bees here. And, uh, Here's, let's see if this works. Here's a little video of them. This is one that's in my backyard and these are my mason bees. You can see the little cavities are all capped off and then some of them are starting to chew their way out. So this is um, in early spring, it happens usually around that first week of April is when we start seeing the mason bees. So something to think about. Um, you guys have been sending in your photos and sightings. There's been a lot of great sightings from you guys. Um, this picture of a red-bellied woodpecker was sent in by Lynn. She said this guy was guarding the seeds for quite a while. The second he flew off, all the little guys came back. So here's a red-bellied woodpecker it's like clinging to the tray of a seed tube feeder there, getting a bit of a snack. This is an awesome photo. Haven't had many reports at all this year about red poles. Last year, we had a really big year, what was called an eruption year of winter finches and red poles were one of them. This year, there's only been a few sightings of red poles, really nothing to write home about. But Luann sent in this photo. She says, had three red poles in my yard out in Holly, New York on March 1st. And red poles will come to Niger feeders. They'll eat sunflower hearts. It looks like here it was feeding on the ground. 
How can you tell this is a red pole? Look at that little raspberry dot on the top of its head. That's how you can tell. That's a really distinguishing characteristic there of the red pole. So Luann has a, had an awesome sighting of a red pole. So keep your eyes out. You never know. You might just see them passing through here. And Stacy's got a sighting. We've talked mockingbirds a little bit. She says, I asked the question recently about seeing a mockingbird this time of the year. This one seems to be hanging out with our house sparrows. When the group of sparrows swoops into the feeders, this beauty has been with them the past couple of weeks. So here is Stacy's photo of the mockingbird. It's on a tray feeder. So mockingbirds are fairly large birds. Um, people will get them sometimes coming to mealworm feeders. It looks like this one is eating some kind of seed cake that probably has mealworms in it or sunflower hearts or both, if I'm identifying it correctly. They'll also sometimes come to Oriole feeders in the spring when people put out oranges and jelly, they will sometimes come to them as well. So right now it looks like Stacy's got her mockingbird coming to some kind of a seed block there. So really cool sighting. Not your most common backyard bird at all. Um, they're fairly large. When they fly, they have those bright white wing patches. So that's a really great distinguishing characteristic there of the mockingbird. So got that. And Stacy also sent in this photo. She says, also this past weekend, you asked if anyone noticed goldfinches brightening up. I would say I'm definitely starting to see this. Here's a couple from 227. So we're getting to that time of the year where um, it's about time for the goldfinches to molt those winter feathers and they'll start to turn bright gold. And sometimes they'll start to have little yellow patches on them, which it looks like this one might have some little yellow patches starting. Um, so it's a really exciting time of the year once those goldfinches start to get gold. They're here all winter long, but they're more of a drab color in the winter than they are in the spring and summer. So another great set of photos sent in by Stacy there. And Mark sent in a whole bunch of photos. He was out birding around Rondequoit Bay, and he says lots of bald eagle activity on Rondequoit Bay this past weekend. Adults, subadults, and juveniles. So eagle flying away with its catch of a fish and yeah he has all kinds of great photos here here's a another eagle where you can tell it's just starting to get that white on its head so the bald eagles while they're in their juvenile and sub-adult phases they don't have that bright white head and bright white tail yet so they can look quite a bit different than their adult counterparts and here's some that are uh, in that stage right here here's another one grabbing a fish and another just another in its adult plumage sitting there on the ice that's uh, pretty typical right now if you find a big open body of water that has some ice floats on it don't be surprised if you see a big black blob on it it's probably a bald eagle and here's some being chased by gulls that happens a lot of the times they'll get mobbed uh, if the if they get too close to a bird that doesn't want them there um, they'll start attacking them so here's one of the adults getting mobbed there by a gull and here's another eagle almost completely in its adult plumage if you look really closely you can still see that it's got some black on the tip of its tail it's got a little bit of black kind of uh, modeling on its face um, but it's almost in it's adult plumage. Here's a juvenile here sitting on the ice. And if you've been into ducks and uh, studying your ducks, you'll see these common mergansers here are in front of it. Um, those are the male common mergansers. There's three of them there. And then looks like a female here on the, on the far left. So you've got your bald eagle and your common mergansers, all very common right now around the water. Same kind of thing here. A couple bald eagles, more common mergansers. Here's a big float of common mergansers and it looks like three eagles and he says i saw at least 13 eagles so there were at least 13 eagles out there when he was out around around a quite bay birding and look at all the common mergansers there you can see the males and then the ones with the reddish heads there are the females so there's a, a mix of both in those photos here so if you go up by the water this time of the year this is a very common sight your common mergansers and your bald eagles really neat and then gulls. Of course, we've got gulls. Here is a great black back gull uh, being chased. And the great black back gull, if you're going out birding and you see a, a gull that's 
huge and very, very dark wings, that's going to be your great black-backed gull. There's also, of course, ring-billed gulls that we have here, herring gulls, um, lesser black-backed gulls he saw. So there's a whole different diversity. There's no such thing as just a seagull. Um, they're all different species with the herring gulls and the ring-billed gulls being our most common, but great black uh, great black back galls are also out there right now too. And here's a gall with a fish, which is a fun picture there. And just look at this whole bunch of birds out there um, with a mute swan in the front. So there's your mute swan there with its orange bill. And here's one in flight. So this is another mute swan out there by the bay. Redheads. So he says, lots of activity, redheads, greater scalp, common merganser, red-breasted merganser, long-tailed ducks, and white-winged scoters. So these are your redheads right now. Here they are in flight. And like their name suggests, they do have a very reddish colored head. They have a bluish colored bill with a black tip. Here's your white-winged scoter, another waterfowl species. They have a really kind of big lumpy type of bill. So it looks not like your typical duck bill and um, they the white wing scoters also have that white patch there on their wing which you can also see when they're in flight here's your scalp right here and your red-breasted mergansers and here's one diving so these are diving ducks there's diving ducks and dabbling ducks dabbling ducks are like your mallard and canada geese that when they feed they'll tip over upside down and their tail feathers are sticking up in the air these other waterfowl species are diving ducks, so they'll actually dive under the water to fish or get their, you know, the little macroinvertebrates there and then pop back up. So here's a red-breasted merganser diving underneath the water. And this is a great photo sent in by Bob. He says, my first song sparrow of the year showed up this morning. So, so we, um, around here in our area in upstate New York here, some people will report song sparrows sporadically through the winter, but they're not real common. They're going to be definitely more common in the spring and summertime. And this is a good sign right here. This is Bob sent in this photo that says his first song sparrow of the year showed up. So um, some other birds you'll probably start to see are going to be the grackles. So we'll talk about grackles a little bit as we get more into the season and red winged blackbirds. We've been getting reports of people getting red-winged blackbirds at their feeder. Going to be some of the most common birds that come back early on in the spring. So really good signs that spring is on its way. And now this is an interesting photo that was sent in by Bobby. It's a mystery bird and we love mystery identifications here. He says, saw a bird this morning around 7.30 a.m. at the top of a tree off in the distance about 100 to 200 yards away. Fairly large, slender, long body, long beak, white or gray head, and dark slash black body. Here are a couple photos I captured. Not great, sorry. Did not remind me of a bald eagle at all. So this is a mystery to me. So this is a little difficult because it's hard to say with it being so far away. I do have a guess though. Um, and if we look at this second photo here, this really tipped me off, um, which makes me believe that this is a grackle. And although it's got a white head, which is not typical at all. Um, look at the tail. So grackles have that triangular shaped tail. They're kind of a long, elongated body and they do have that, that dark body with kind of that triangular shaped tail. So this to me says grackle, even though it has the white head. So white head is definitely really strange, but it's probably a grackle that is leucistic, that has some of that uh, pigment that is missing on its body. So this is not your typical grackle here. It looks to me, that is what I would guess is that it's a leucistic grackle. Uh, let us know, Bob, if that sounds right or not, depending on the size. If it was much larger than a grackle, then we might have to do, dive in further and, and uh, call in some other people to get their, their thoughts. But I'm curious what you guys think. To me, that looks like a grackle there with its, with its tail. Um, that is your typical kind of grackle tail there. So really cool sighting. But the white head is very strange. So you never know what you'll see when you go out birding there. Um, Yvonne sent in some other photos as well. She says, here are some pics of frequenters to our yard and feeders. Some were taken by me, some by my husband, Rich. So uh, they, she sent in some of these photos. There's, of course, the male cardinal, which you're probably seeing and hearing now. They're, they've been singing quite a bit. Uh, female cardinal, 
beautiful bird. The tufted titmouse, it looks like this one has a little nut or something in its mouth. So lots of tufted titmouse out there. They're starting to sing. I heard some of them singing last week as well. Chickadees, our black capped chickadees, lots of people's favorites there. Morning doves. So here's some morning doves coming to their feeders. Juncos, we still have the dark eyed juncos here. And you can find them usually underneath your feeder eating the the, the seeds that have fallen to the ground. And we've got a couple woodpeckers here. They look like downy woodpeckers. This is a great way to identify them. This picture is fabulous because if you look on the right here, this male downy woodpecker, because it's got the little red patch on the back of its head, is just about the size of the suet cake. So that's perfect. It shows exactly the, the perfect size there of the woodpecker. If it was significantly larger than that suet cake, then you would know it was a hairy woodpecker. But small woodpecker, small beak, these are going to be downy woodpeckers. And here you've got the male and the female on the left here. She does not have that red patch on the back of her head. Uh, some, some other photos here sent in by Bob, who's been seeing hawks. So people still reporting Cooper's hawks and sharp shinned hawks. He says, I posted a photo of what I think was a juvenile Cooper's hawk earlier this week, but it was not in my neighborhood. Here's a photo of a hawk that has recently shown up in the neighborhood. This one, I believe, is a sharp shinned hawk, squared off tail and not very large. So... I should have blown it up here a little bit, but here is your the hawk here, and it does have a very squared off tail. Sometimes it's hard to tell size with these because it's um, you can't really tell how big the tree is in the photo without being there, but it could very, very well be a sharp shinned hawk there with that really squared off tail. Your Cooper's hawk would be more um, would be more of a rounded tail. And then here it is in flight, flying through the trees here. Um, so some hawk activity, people still reporting them. As it gets warmer and the snow melts, um, you'll probably see less hawk activity at your feeders because they're able to find some more prey items. And Bob says, so much activity from this hawk. I believe it is a sharp shin hawk based on size and flat slash straight end of the tail. It has been zipping around all over the neighborhood. Very difficult to track because it's fast, especially into the wooded areas. Two closer shots were taken directly behind my house while it sat in a tree scour uh, scouring the yard with its eyes. Other shots have been hundreds of yards away. So this very well could be that sharp chin hawk, kind of a small rounded, a small sized hawk very well could be a sharp shinned hawk so here's some photos of that and this is in its adult plumage too if it was in a juvenile plumage it would be more brown um, so this is more of a gray color on its back with a speckling on its belly so here's one of it in flight as well so really cool photo sent in by all of you guys thank you for sending in your photos let us know what kind of breeding bird behavior you are seeing as far as nesting if you're interested in starting to to think about what kind of nest boxes you want to put up. We did a class on nesting on Saturday. You can rewatch that here. Um, so absolutely, those are always available. All of our old classes are available on our Facebook page and we're putting them up on our YouTube page now as well. So you can view them on either. Um, we've got some people who are logging in here. Randy says, good morning. Good morning, Randy. Um, Dina says, good morning, everyone. I have a male house sparrow hanging out in a birdhouse, sticking his head out of the hole for blocks of time. Seems to make for a long day for him, <laughs> lol. So <laughs> she's got a, a, a male house sparrow that seems to be trying to establish his territory there and is hanging out inside the house. So that's definitely signs there of some breeding behavior. Uh, Margaret says, good morning all, enjoying the glorious sunshine. Yes, this morning we woke up to a nice layer of snow and then the snow continued to fall. But right now we've got some sunshine here. Um, Dina says, great photo, Luann. So Luann had the photo there of the uh, common red pole. I'll bring that up here, which is a really cool sighting. So here is Luann's sighting from about a week ago, actually exactly a week ago, of a common red pole. And she had three of those. 
in her yard. So really neat. Um, Randy's commenting on the photos too. He says, love the pictures, Mark, uh, Mark J. Mark's always sending in lots of fun photos from his birding. So we appreciate that. Uh, a dog named Boo says, had, I had seven wild turkeys walk through my backyard this morning. A sure sign of spring for me. Yes. How cool is that? So turkeys are definitely, they're out um, all year long and some people do get them underneath their feeders here and there and they're always a crazy sight to see because they are just so big um she says uh, or the dog says here she says all seven were hens the toms will be here showing off soon so it sounds like a yearly event there with the turkeys that's really fun um bob says app said grackle as well I did see other grackles, but they had normal coloring. I'll be keeping an eye out. So that was Bob's photo here of the mystery bird. So yeah, to me, that looks like a grackle just in the shape of its body with the tail like that. Um, that screams grackle to me. A long triangular tail looks like a grackle. Um, Angelique says the first house finches of the season started showing up my, at my feeders on Sunday. So she's getting some house finch activity coming to her feeders, which is really fun. So it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember that we have Birds of Prey coming to the birdhouse on Saturday. That's from 11 till 1. We'll have another broadcast on Saturday as well. So we will be back um, in the same location here on Saturday at 10 o'clock. And until then, enjoy your week and enjoy your birds. And we will see you then. Bye-bye.